Welcome ESO community to my official Lycanthrope PvP build for the Greymoor patch. Werewolf has gotten an overhaul so now it works on all classes and there's way more build versi versatility now than what there was. So, or I would say more build options. But anyway, in this video I'll be going over the armor sets, classes, what race I'll recommend for this build and the champion points. And obviously the trades and enchants and so on. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Your food that you're going to be using, right, is going to be Bewitch Sugar Skulls. It just gives you the most resource for a basic tri-stat food, and it gives you some health recovery, which is beneficial on a werewolf. The, uh, if you don't have Sugar Skulls, I recommend using long fin pasty or any tri stat of food that gives you that effect. Um, you can use pack leader's bone broth, but it will lower your mag pool, so your sustain on your mag will be kind of worse. So, but you can still pull it off. And the fact that pack leader's bone broth lowers your ultimate cost a little bit. The potions I recommend is going to be basic tri potions and detect pots. You no longer need to run weapon power pots or anything like that because you're already going to have yeah. Major Brutality and Major Savage at all times as a werewolf now. Well, in werewolf form. If you don't have tripods, just get buy some basic alliance potions and use those. Tri potions use your sustain and your detect potions and also these also move movability so you can kind of be kind of immune to certain CCs but they also detect players, which you'll need to get if you want to be able to finish off certain Cloak and Night Blades. All right, so the first armor set is Hulking Draugr. I show this set in pr practically all of my builds, except a few. The reason I choose Hulking, it just synergizes so well with the Werewolf, because Werewolf, when you transform, you get about 30% increase with max stamina, which just scales very good with Hulking. Hulking just gives you a bunch of stam. A bunch of 1,000 pieces and then like almost 3,000. No, almost 6,000. Yeah, almost 2,700 max stam at the end or 2,600 or something like that. Or 2,560, I believe, if it's a fully, fully gold. The uh, trait is going to be Nernhold, increase your physical damage. The enchant is going to be weapon damage glyph. Now, this is a one hand and shield and two-hander build. You could do a bow, you could do dual wield, or you could do a basic dual wield or two-hander, it'll work fine. Do not use bow and werewolf because your damage will be lower. Make sure you always use melee weapons. You can use dual wields, you can use swords, you can use axes because all those traits do not go over into werewolf form. Or at least the uh, effects from the skill lines don't go over. The traits do, the enchants do, but not the effects. And then your shield is going to be an impenetrable, what a tri-stat hakijo enchant. Um, for all your gear, I know that impenetrable got nerfed because we're getting base crit resistance on our character sheet, but I decided to keep everything impen because honestly I still think it's the strongest trait in PvP. But anyway, like I said, impen and a tri-stat hakijo. Your back bar is going to be an Asylum Sword, or Asylum Two-Hander, so you can basically get Ultimate. It's kind of like a Blood Spawn proc a little bit. I think they kind of nerfed it a little bit, it kind of seems like. But it's still pretty good. Good for running up to random mobs and executing them out in Open World Cyrodiil, or catching somebody when they're low and they'll just build Ultimate. And obviously Nern Hold and Weapon Damage and Chat. Troll King. I know Troll King was nerfed, but I still use it, and I scale that, or synergize that with the uh, Sugar Skulls. If you do not have Troll King, run a Mighty Chudan, or some type of sustained monster set, or if you want, you can run Selene's or Malakina for extra damage. I wouldn't recommend it, because your stain's going to be worse. And obviously, Mpen. I recommend turning it to a tri stat here, but I got max stamina. I never changed it yet. I need to go ahead and do that when I can. But anyway, the second set is Shacklebreaker. 
an amazing set. It gives you weapon damage, max mag, mag recovery, and just max stamina. It just really benefits with the werewolf. More magicka to pull more heals, more stamina to roll dodge, and, and also to increase your damage and block, and weapon damage, and obviously to increase your damage and some recoveries. M-Pen, and you also want to try stat Hakijo as well. Every single piece should be in pen. I never change the trait on my feet yet, but I will do that. But I recommend turning everything in pen and try standing it all, all armor pieces. For the jewelry, I have infused, but I am thinking about turning it triune. Um, but if if you don't have these, just get the basic robust. And obviously, you want to run increased physical harm. But if you want to be able to survive longer, I would go Triune. If you want more damage, go Infused. If you want more max stamina, just do all robust. <clears throat> so where do you get Hulking Draugr? Um, you get it from Dire Frost Keep. So where do you get Troll King? You get that from um, the Blessed Crucible dungeon. And then where you get Shackle Breaker, it is craftable in Vardenfell, the Morrowind DLC. I believe that's where you can get it, or you can find someone who, had, who owns the crafting table or something like that and craft it there. But these are very easy sets to get a hold of. Hulking Draugr is a little pain because like the drop rate's a bit lower, especially the shield. But once you get it, it'll be worth it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the skills. Oh, wait, first things first the classes. You can be a Necro, Nightblade, you can be all classes for this build. And the races I recommend is Imperial, Orc, and Dark Elf. This build, by the way, is a Dark Elf, but I recommend Orc for a little more damage and speed. You want to be more survivable and more pull more heals. You are stronger heals, I'd say. Or more, uh, yeah, basically stronger percentage heals. Do Imperial. And then if you want to pull more heals, I might, I might increase mag pull. Do Dark Elf. All right, for the first skill, I'm going to do Ice Fortress, and I like that last part there. I get minor protection, increase your resistance, or increase your damage mitigation. Green Lotus, this is very good. It's kind of a good way to survive in human form. Just heavy attack and light attack people with that Green Lotus. You can kind of keep your stamina up and keep your health going. Especially if your health gets below 50%, Troll King will proc it. Bull Netch, um, pretty good. Gives you brutality, and then it removes a negative effect from you. Shimmering Shield, I can't give up this. I need this to survive against projectile base builds, sorks, mag blades, archers, you can name it. And it also gives you ultimate increase. And then obviously resolving vigor. That's your heal. Or your main heal. On your back bar, you want to use Dizzy Swing, Critical Rush, Carve. Executioner, remember you also have the Asylum weapon on your back bar, but you don't have to run it if you don't want, so you can basically set this up any way you want to. And like I said, any class will work. And then Rally, pretty decent heal. Well, like I said, healing also got nerfed a little bit too this past, so <laughs> I'm gonna give you some minor adjustments there. And then I just put some, I just slot some random back bar ultimate, so I just put Warhorn. All right, so those are the human skills. So let me go ahead and explain what you want to run on a werewolf, like what morphs and uh, stuff like that I recommend for this patch. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get into the werewolf skills and morphs, and I'll explain why I chose the morphs I did. All right, guys, so the first one is Pack Leader. It gives you straight-up mitigation, and it also gives you weapon damage. Therefore, that will increase your physical attacks. Now, like I said, hulking is very good because it synergizes with that max stam right there at 30%. And I chose pack leader because it's just overall tankier and you can stay in form longer. And to the fact that, guys, if you transform anywhere in towns or anything like that, you will get bounties. Just be very aware. <laughs> I got a bounty a few times, so I'm just letting y'all know. Anyway, so the first morph is Brutal Pounds. I think it is the best one out of the two because what it does is it gives you weapon damage. I believe the more enemies you hit or 
or how many times you spam this one ability. Like, I think I spammed it a few times and I was able to get the stack up to six times. And 100 times six right there, guys, is 600 weapon damage. That is insane. And the fact that this bleed will also put an execute on your opponent. But anyway, if you want to use Feral Pounce, it will keep you in form even longer. You can use either any one you want. And like I said, you can also be a Berserker if you would like, because this build works for both. Hercene's Rage. I use this because of that major Berserk, but here's the downside. You will take more damage, but look at this. You're a pack leader, so you're already been, you know, mitigating that 10% already. And if you use a certain fear morph, if you use a deafening roar, you put minor maim on your targets when you fear them. But in this case, you have ferocious roar, which will give you faster heavy attacks. But I'll get to that more in a second. But if you run the fortitude, I believe that it increases some type of recovery. Um, I didn't look at it too much, but and it also I think fortitude gives you a stronger heal. But I choose the rage because I want much most damage as possible. I want to be able to take people down. All right, so for the fear, this one does off balance, and it basically when you fear them, your hedge attacks are going to be much faster. So what does that mean? That means you're able to pull off your heavy attack how of agony combos on people way quicker and stuff like that and it's very devastating if you can land it on someone properly it will kill them if they're not ready for it especially a fear heavy fear heavy attack howl or fear heavy into an howl it's just it, if they're squishy they'll drop all right so the other morph is howl of agony so when enemies are facing you you basically <laughs> do 25% more damage. They lowered it a little bit, but I still think it's very powerful. And the other one is more of a group base, but can be used as well if you want to be more groupish. But this build's more solo based and overall just better damage. So you want to basically increase your damage as much as possible. Now for your Claws of Anguish, you can use either one. I prefer the Defile because you need to smack that on people. You gotta shut their heels down. It puts major and minor to file. The minor to file comes from the disease status effect that the werewolf applies now. The only one that's going to be immune to that minor effect is going to be Argonians. So, be aware of that. So you also want to get every passive as a werewolf. I mean, you can get Blood Moon if you want to create more wolves to run with. This would be something that you want to keep. But the most important one is technically all of them. But I like... <laughs> If you don't need any of, like the one that I would recommend not to get is Blood Moon. Alright, and also, Call of the Pack is very important now. Pack Leader, your Dire Wolves will also will allow you to stay in Werewolf longer versus the Berserker. If you want to be able to tank things easier and overall stay in Wolf longer, Pack Leader. If you want to be able to do more damage, like overall damage and burst amount even quicker, go Berserker. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into the champion points. Alright, so this is the champion point setup, and I'm going to go ahead and go over it. Alright, so you want to do 66 Warlord. You basically want to make this high as possible so you can constantly break out and stay on the move. Stay defensive, or use your defensive to become offensive, or counter into offensive moves. And then also put 4 in the sprinter there to reduce your running. Alright, so, 64 in Tenacity to increase your heavy attacks, 75 Arcanus to increase your mag recovery. Very important, because like I said, Werewolf still has a mag sustain problem, but everything else with it will make it even better. Uh, the most important one here is when running, just to increase your movement speed. Alright, and then 61 to Tumbling, so you can roll dodge more, which is your type of defense as a Werewolf. You either want to block or roll dodge. I recommend roll dodging because you don't take as we don't take as nearly as much damage. <clears throat> so in the blue tree, I went 75 mighty, 70 piercing, and 44 precise strikes. I made my penetration value pretty high, increased my damage done effects with physical attacks. It's a werewolf. Amazing. I recommend that. 
and then 44 precise strikes to increase my critical healing because your werewolf heal by the way your mag one is actually scaled off your weapon crit so i believe precise strikes also allows your heal to crit more often and also the fact that your crits will be even higher in damage and then 70 piercing for more penetration and then 81 master at arms i'm going to put it into physical weapon expert if you want to go ahead and do that because it also does jazz and werewolf form. I might eventually end up changing it, but this is what I have currently, and it's working just fine. Most important passive is Butcher here. Forgot to go over what was the most important passive and the other one. Real quick, the most important one is Exploiter. All right, so for your defense CP, I put 81 Ironclad. I took everything out of resistance because you're already gonna have a whole bunch of crit resistance anyway, almost 3,000 or at least 2,000. 700 because I do have one armor piece that's not uh, impenetrable, but uh, like I said, you want to have all pieces impen. And you want ironclad to reduce incoming damage. 75 hardy to reduce poison and physical damages. So werewolf takes a lot of damage from poison, almost 25%, or actually it is 25%. 75 elemental defender to reduce damage taken from magic attacks. So that means that means sword, mag necros, bunch of other elemental damages like fire and stuff 37 thick skin to reduce your damage over time effects that means dots bleed poison ticks anything that has a damage over time effect to it most important passive here is unchained and critical leech critical leech will proc your troll king when you're under 50 percent health and unchained is basically gives you a free stamina ability all right guys that is the champion points for my werewolf build for the Greymore patch and I hope you guys will enjoy some of the gameplay footage that I will also be showing and yeah this is it this is it hope y'all enjoy and I also will be coming out with some more builds later on but anyway peace